subject of integrity, the mission ingredient. That's the word for today, integrity, the missing ingredient. And look what it says. Have you ever wondered why things have not worked or are not working in your life? You ever wondered that? I wonder why stuff ain't working. Perhaps <coughs> it seems the pieces just do not come together. You may lack a key ingredient, just as with recipes. Got, I got any cookers in the house? Any bakers? You must have the right ingredients for a successful product. To make a cake, you need key ingredients such as flour, eggs, and sugar. And you have to mix the dry ingredients separately from the wet ingredients and combine them in a certain order. Sacrificing any of these ingredients or deviating from the established order of the recipe will drastically alter the results. You will produce something, but if you do not follow the correct order, your finished product will suffer. So we're dealing with the subject of, of integrity. That's the missing ingredient. And when we, we think about integrity, this word is an interesting word. It means uh, the quality of being honest. It, 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 I'm going to tell you this. It's hard to get folks to be honest. It's hard for, to get us to be real with ourselves. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. How many of we need some morals? Y'all y'all ain't talking back to me. This word integrity means morally upright. Another word for integrity is character. Character is characteristics. As a believer, as a child of God, we need certain characters that we should be displaying. How many know you cannot go to the grocery store and buy character? <laughs> I say you can't go to the grocery store and buy and find character. How many know that character is developed over time? In order to get character, you have to endure some things. That, it, it helps me understand why Joseph, it took God 13 years before Joseph could become second in command in Egypt because God was working on his character. In the church, we put emphasis on titles and positions and gifts, but we put very little emphasis on character. There are some things that God is going to do in your life. There are some things he wants to do in your life, but he cannot bring those things to pass until you get your character in place. Y'all quiet. And, and just to give you an example of character, really character, spiritual character is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance. And the main thing, we need some self-control. Y'all quiet. One, one, of the, one of the main fruits that we need is self-control. I'm amazed how we control other people, but we can't control ourselves. Y'all quiet. Say, neighbor, integrity is the missing ingredient. Until, until God can get you to be honest, there are certain things that he cannot entrust you with. And we're going to deal with money. A lot of folk can't handle money. So some people, God got to keep them broke to keep them saved. Because it's like when you start getting a little money, you start acting a fool. <laughs> you backslide. Start, stop coming to church. You don't tie. You start tripping. Y'all quiet. So God, before there are certain blessings, though, and I'm talking about those choice blessings, God cannot really release into your life until he gets your character in place. We're going to deal with that today. Similar in our Christian lives, integrity is a key ingredient that puts things in order. It is not the only ingredient, but sacrificing it will produce an undesirable result. 
Integrity refers to our personal level of honesty as well, of our, uh, as, well as our level of trustworthiness with God. Can God trust you? Can I trust you? Oh, God, y'all quiet. You, 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 listen, some people are not trustworthy. Anytime somebody say something and don't do what they say, you can't trust them. Say, neighbor, you are no shorter than your word. Tell the other neighbor, say, neighbor, your word is you. We cannot separate you from your word. So if you say something and you don't do it, that's a clear sign that you don't have integrity. That's why the Bible says uh, it's better not to vow than to vow and not do. So why would you make a promise you know you ain't going to keep? And I mean, no, even if you say something and you find yourself you're not able to do it, you need to go back and say, I can't do it. Oh, God. What are we, what's our problem? We don't have integrity. People gifted. All this stuff, that don't mean nothing if you don't have integrity. That's the reason why stuff not going to come together for you. Because God can't trust you. And we can't trust you either. <laughs> and throw that out. Ask yourself this, am I honest? Can I be trusted? If you're not honest with yourself, you will not be honest with God. And if you're not honest with God, you will not be honest with people. Oh, God, I'm preaching this this morning. Integrity is the key ingredient in our lives. This honesty brings an element into the mixture as well. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Watch this. For I am in the Psalm 25 and 21. It says that integrity will preserve you. It will keep you. If you're the type of person you up and down, in and out, you say today, lost tomorrow, it's because you don't have no integrity. Y'all quiet. I know why you're quiet, because I'm stepping on your toes. Just say ouch. Just say ouch. You thought you were going to shout this morning. We need some integrity, man. Can God trust you with a million dollars? Oh, Jesus. Can God trust you with a mansion? Can God trust you to be over people? Can God trust you with the promotion? What do you mean trust? Are you going to continue to do the right thing when God bless you? Before you say, okay, I want you to examine yourself. This is our first scripture. This is what it says. Okay. Examine what? He didn't tell you to examine anybody else. We good at examining everybody else. But are you examining your in other words, this is what he said. This is Paul writing to the church. He writes to church folk. He said, are you honest with yourself? My God, this is, I feel like running. God is asking us through Apostle Paul, are you honest with yourself? Whether you be in the what? Faith. He said, so you check it out and make sure you really say. Prove your own what? Self. T Listen, if you test yourself or if you judge yourself, I don't have to judge you. Y'all cry. No, ye not. You're what? Your own self. How that Jesus Christ is what? In you. If Christ is in you, how you dishonest? Except ye be what? What does that mean? Reprobate means when God turns you over to yourself. I believe the reason why we got so many mental issues in our, in our churches, folks, your minds lose, people losing their mind. You know why? Because they will not be honest with their selves. we dishonest. If you lie to yourself, you will lie to me. Oh, God. If you lie to God, you showed up a lie to me. Y'all are quiet. Say, neighbor, integrity is the missing ingredients. 
What we're missing in our churches, our homes, our communities, our governments, our jobs. People not honest. They're not honest, first of all, with themselves. So if you're not honest with you, you how are you going to be honest with me? You're not. And I used to say this. I used to say this. I used to say that it's, it's, it's hard to deal with dishonest people. No, I didn't change that. I got a new revelation. <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> to deal with somebody that won't be honest. You almost got to walk away from because you a shooter. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm just going to teach this this morning. It's hard. Now, how you save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost and dishonest? You know why? Somebody say why? Because you ain't saved, you ain't sanctified, and you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. Let's take a look at this real quick. Anybody getting anything so far? Read. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Watch this. The honesty of those that walk upright shall what? So watch this. Being honest will help you get to your destinations. How many got how many on uh, going somewhere? How do you get there? You gotta be honest. You cannot be dishonest with yourself and God and people and expect to fulfill God's purpose for your life. So you wonder how you gonna get to where you're trying to go? Honesty. How did Joseph survive? Those 13 years of hardship and difficult and heartbreak and all that, he kept his integrity. He stayed honest. Listen to this. Let's talk about somebody else. This is my, one of my favorite characters, Job. The Bible says that Satan attacked Job. And if Satan attacked Job, guess what? He's going to attack you. Please don't be naive. Don't think because you gave your life to God that everything's just going to go your way. No, you will have seasons of attack. And the purpose of God allowing Satan, y'all ready, to attack you is because he's trying to train you. My God. What's the purpose of basic training? To learn the tactics of your what? Enemy. Am I making sense? So you're going to have attacks. So gonna, people are going to lie on you. The devil going to create circumstances and situations. People going to threaten you. All this stuff comes with spiritual warfare. Because the Bible says what? The weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal, but they are what? Mighty. What? Through God. To the what? Pulling down the strongholds. Listen, your enemy is not people. It takes maturity to realize that. <laughs> your enemy is the devil. And he's a spirit that works through people. Somebody say integrity is the missing ingredient. That's what we're missing. That's why things not working out. Now, now that's not a negative because sometimes you're not doing anything. It's just God is still working on you. We will be back after this message. Look in the camera. And tell us what did God do. I'm going to let you hold the mic. <laughs> All right. Praise God. We had, Bishop had family prayer for the families about seven weeks ago. And Terry got the family together and we all came and Bishop prophesied over us that we were going to get another home. Mind you, the home that we have is already a huge home. So we told Priscilla about it. Priscilla went home, that's our daughter, and she went home. And she got busy, started looking for a home. Well, she found a mansion. Hallelujah. Well, we drove over to the house and we claimed it and prayed over it told Bishop, Bishop, so you're connected to me. What's connected to him is going to be connected to us. He said, it's yours. We still couldn't believe it. 
because I still had this house that I had to sell. So I got ready to call my real estate agent and told him, and he said, you selling your house? I said, yeah. He said, don't even put it on the market. He said, what you want for? I told him what I wanted for. And hallelujah. And the lady gave me what we asked for. Don't stop there. Terry got to praying and she said, well, I'm not going to give them what they want for it. I'm going to ask them for $150,000 less than what they want for the house. Plus ask them to play the closing call. The real estate agent said, you're asking for too much. But Terry said, that's what God told me to tell them. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the offer came back and they took the offer for both of them. Come to find out, mommy being a veteran, I don't have to pay taxes on the house. Hallelujah. Yeah, that part. <laughs> the, the house is huge. It's over six bedrooms, six bathrooms, 7,500 square feet. On an acre and a half of land. And then God put the super on the natural. They paid off $11,000 of my credit. Paid off my car. Oh, hallelujah. Being connected right here to this man. Hallelujah. God called Moses at 40. He didn't send him till he was 80. See, some of us, we think we're more than what we are. And we base that on because we can quote a few scriptures. Can you quote it when the enemy come against you? Oh, God. Can you quote it when all hell break out? Anybody can quote a scripture when everything going well. But sometimes I discover when I'm going through, won't nothing come up. <laughs> Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? You quote all these scriptures. And soon the devil hits you, he knocked the wind out of you, you get amnesia. Because <laughs> it's totally different when you're under pressure. Oh God, I'm preaching up here. It's different when something's coming. It's, it's, it's different when your money's funny. And how many know when your money funny, you can't sometimes you can't get no honey. <laughs> you thinking about some sex, your wife thinking about some bills. I'm preaching up in here. Say neighbor. Integrity is the missing ingredient. Just being honest. Just being honest with where you are. But being honest with what you're struggling with. How many struggling with something? Please don't raise your hand. Everybody in here is struggling with something. Some are struggling with lust, pride, stubbornness, rebellion, unforgiveness. Y'all talk back to me. Be honest about what's going on on the inside of you so you can get delivered. Walk around with all this stuff going on in your heart and you wonder why God ain't listening to you. Because the Bible says when you stand praying, forgive. Joseph's brothers did him wrong. They plotted to kill him. They sold him as a slave. Joseph could have easily been bitter. But instead of being bitter, he decided to be better. My God, somebody got that. Somebody got that. I'm, I'm discovering, man, the stuff I go through is a purpose behind it. And I may not always know the purpose at that moment. But how many know you understand by and by? It's some stuff I didn't know last week I know today. <laughs> you know why? Because your experiences become a part of you. And they give you insight for the next fight. All right, read, read that Proverbs 11 and 3. Read. 
the integ integrity of the upright shall guide them. Shall guide them. So you need guidance, be honest. How, how can God guide you and you are dishonest? Wow, I just got this revelation. That's how you marry somebody ain't saved. Because you're not honest. My God. Folks don't want to talk to me when they meet somebody. You know why they don't want to talk to me? Because I already know it ain't right. How are you bypassing your pastor and finna marry somebody? I can tell you why. Because I ain't your pastor. My God. I just hit some. I ain't your pastor. Because that's disrespectful. That's just like one of my daughters finna marry some man and I don't meet him. Because you, you know, I'm not your spiritual father. You know how I know somebody how you know. You don't do nothing I say. I say come to church, you stay at home. I say go left, you go right. I say stop, you keep going. Because I ain't your spiritual father. Y'all quiet. All right, read. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Wow, but the who? You know what perverseness mean? A person that's, that, that's going to do wrong. I don't care what you say. Some folk going to do what they want to do. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Y'all quiet. You know what I do when folk get acting crazy with me? Y'all ready? I step back. <laughs> I step back. Because when somebody acting crazy and you're trying to get in, they bite your hand. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm, you ain't finna bite my hand. <laughs> See, that, man, that's what I'm saying. You got to learn. Somebody said you got to learn from your experiences. I've been through enough stuff in life to know how to deal with certain issues when they come. Because I've been through it before. One thing I do know about is people. <laughs> you know why somebody say why? Because we're in the people business. So if I'm going to be in the people business, I have to know who? People. I can tell you what you're going to do before you do it. Y'all cry. And I can tell you why you're doing it. I can tell you you're doing it with. <laughs> Y'all cry. Just, but see, but watch this. I, this is my point. Just because you know something, you know, I've got to say nothing. See, some of us say, the Bible says, a fool of his whole mind. You ain't got to say everything on your mind. Some stuff you just keep it to, your, to yourself. And some stuff that God shows you is to protect you. Y'all quiet. It ain't always you telling. You got to tell everybody something. The Lord showed me. Shut up. He ain't told you nothing. Have he told you anything about you? How the Lord showing you me, but he never showed you you? Somebody said it's backwards. You will never see you, but you see everybody. I discern. You discern what? You going through. I ain't got to discern. I can see it on your face. <laughs> I ain't got discern that you ain't been in church. Because you know what people do when they go through? They don't come to church. What's so and so at? I can tell you at home going through. When you going to come through? When you going to come through? I said, when you going to come through? Uh, uh, I was uh, with Pastor Jackson and Lady Jackson, and they had me cracking up. They said, come on through. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> I guess that's a slang word. Come on through. Say, neighbor, <laughs> you need to come on through it. Stop whining. Stop boohooing. Stop cussing. Come on through it. Because <laughs> it did not come to stay. It's coming to what? Pass. God just working on your character. God, listen. God is getting you ready. I know you don't believe this for something big. God don't bring you into big without working on you. God already knew that Joseph was going to be second in command in Egypt. But God wanted to make sure that his character was intact. It takes time. Let me tell y'all something. If you're in ministry, you have a call in your life for ministry, it takes time for God to get you where you're trying. Listen, y'all ready? I know y'all going to be surprised. I am not where I want to be. I know you look at the clothes, the bling, and all that. That's wonderful, great, and all that. I'm not where I want to be. God has shown me more. God has shown me greater. So how do I get there? I got to keep moving. Hold on. I got to stay honest. I, I got to live holy. I got to keep seeking God. 
I got to keep sowing. I got to keep praying. I got to keep forgiving. I got to keep loving. That's how you get there. See, some of us, this is what we do. We, we accomplish a little something we threw. You stopped doing all the stuff you was doing before you got where you was at. As if you have arrived. I got news for you. It's a new level. God got more for you. It's more anointing. Y'all cry. It's more money. It's more stuff. It's more people God wants you to affect. It's new levels of ministry. It's greater anointings that God want to release on us. But some of us have arrived. How do you know? Because you're not doing anything else. I told my wife this, and I, I made this up in my mind. You know, I got a personal trainer. Well, I got, it, it, it's, it's, it's complicated to explain what it is, but it's, it's awesome. I said, I'm going to exercise the rest of my life. That's a commitment. Because <laughs> sometimes my emotions be up here and down here. I don't feel like going, feel lazy, but I got to push past that. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm training, and they wearing me out. Yeah. Why is that? Somebody say, why? I want to be healthy. I got goals. I got aspirations. I got dreams. They're not just going to come to pass. They, I got to do something. I got to mix some faith with what I believe. You say you believe, but no, where's the action? You don't believe it? My God, I'm, I've been preaching long. Man. All right, read. Is that it? Go Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. 12 and 22. Say, neighbor, neighbor. integrity is the missing ingredient. That's what we're missing in the body of Christ. That's what preachers are missing. That's what parents are missing. That's what business owners are missing. They don't have integrity. They're not honest. Listen, let me, show, let me throw this out. You're not a business owner because you have a business. You are a good business owner because you take care of business. You pay your bills, you pay your employees, you make sure stuff, people got all they need to do the job effectively. We invite you to join the World Crumbs Partnership. Together we can impact the world, accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister in so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry continues to grow, may your life also produce food as your lives. No More Crumbs Partner, we will lead around the globe creating change because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus located at 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri 63136 or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.